Ever since I was a small little boy, I've always loved robots. And so whenever I get the chance to 3D print a robot, and, and I'm going to jump at it. So let's print a robot. I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. Build tech sheets, large or small, do not make good hats. Not that long ago, I saw Joe over at 3D Maker Noob 3D printing a foldable robot design from Fab365. You can see it right here. The idea is you print it all out on a build plate and it's in pieces, but the pieces are connected by these plastic hinges. And if you very gently start to rotate parts of the robot into place, the plastic hinges don't break, but they bend. Please work, please work. <laughs> you get a robot. This is a really neat robot design. Like I said, it's from Fab365. I'll put a link down in the description and I paid US $5 for the model. The arms, the arms and the legs and even the shoulders, they're all individual pieces that print in place. And so you get these cool joints that the robot has without having to assemble parts. It's using a function of the plastic in that it can give without breaking to create a, a living joint. I mean, you can do this with flexible materials, but you're not wanting to fold this robot in and out over and over and over. You're just gonna fold it once and it's got little tabs that lock into place and you have yourself a robot. This robot right here was printed on the Ultimaker 3 using Matter Hackers PLA. I think it was 230 on the nozzle, 60C on the bed, 60 millimeter print speed, 0.2 layers, you know the drill. But this robot's gonna step aside because we printed more than just one robot. How about it? This, look at the colors, this is crazy. This robot right here was printed on the Raze 3D N2 Plus. Unfortunately, this doesn't snap into place and I haven't investigated why, but this is at 100% scale. This is 200% scale and it's this, oh, it's like the robot is mid exploding. The color scheme that you see is by way of snipping filaments on the rays and then feeding new colored filaments down the filament path. It produces an interesting result. I really like the colors on this robot. I can use some super glue to keep him together because obviously I don't want to keep folding and unfolding robots, but I love this idea. I love taking the functional creativity that Fab365 has made with this robot and adding some color and adding some new visual elements. The color really helps. Color's really cool. Oh, just fall down. Well, I don't just print things smaller. I do print things bigger. So that's what I did. I fed some Matter Hackers Gold PLA into the G-Max and I started printing. A uh, nozzle was 215C. The big bed was 60C. I was using Magic Goo on the build tack just to give it some extra stick. The G-Max went, 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 and oh no, something happened in my robot that came off the G-Max is actually without feet and without hands and without the top of his head. I was actually there when the failure happened. For some reason, the G-Max, as it was printing around here, it moved up. It kind of did this, spit out some filament, it dove into the model. It just wasn't happy. I talked to Gordon over at G-Create. The only time they've ever seen something like this happen is when an SD card was going bad. I thought maybe it was electrical interference, but I had a spare SD card. I did try again. Sure enough, it worked. And here it is. So this is the same filament that's right here, but this, this robot without the top of its head, without the legs, without the hands, this is it. What's really cool when you size something up, the clearance between pieces, as long as your tolerances are good, mean that things move around and rotate much, much easier. However, because we are scaling this up, the plastic joints that are being created with the PLA material, there's a big chance that they're thicker, which means they're going to be harder to bend or they're going to be more brittle and they may break. They didn't break when folding legless, armless, top of the headless robot here. Let's try. All right, here's the first one. Okay, I felt a little crack, but it's a little bit of a give. Okay, that went okay. Here's the third part of the body. There we go. Now the head. Okay, things are still connected. That's good. And lastly, the bottom part. So I did have some PLA strands break 
nothing broke all the way. So everything is still connected, which means that we should be able to put our robot together. There we go. There's the robot. One of the things I could have done was use a blow dryer or a heat gun to heat up the joints before bending them because that would have given some heat to the joints to make them just bend a little bit better. I didn't do that because I didn't do it on this one. It seemed to work. So I didn't do it on this one either. It seemed to work as well. Oh, something just finished. Let me go get it. <laughs> Look. Look at this. This is crazy here. Let's move this robot to the side. All right, the G-Max, uh, it finished. And look at this robot print right here. So this was printed on the G-Max 1.5 XT Plus. It's using gold, orange, silver, and lime green Matter Hackers PLA. Again, 215 on the nozzle, 60C on the bed, 60 millimeters per second, 0.2 millimeter or 0.3 millimeter layer height. A really good layer height. It looks so amazing. The colors on this are crazy because I was using the Palette Plus in random mode. So four inputs on the palette and it takes each filament randomly and it takes between 200 millimeters and 750 millimeters of filament from each one as it's doing it randomly. So it's just depositing it in a random order. It's a really cool thing. And I'm gonna do a video on the palette to kind of showcase the technology here and as soon as I get some time. But this robot, look at it, look at this robot. All oh, the colors on this are good. Tell you what, let's get it off the build plate. Let's put it together. It's a flex plate. <laughs> Ooh. It's cool when you take it off the big build tax sheets, a little static electricity. The colors on this robot, again, are fantastic. And we'll get some close-ups of the face and the arms and the legs and everything just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at. And again, it's at the same scale as this one and this one. So the, the joints, the clearance between the pieces is great. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a heat gun and we'll heat up the joints and we'll see how much better or easier it is to actually fold the robot into shape I'm using a Wagner heat gun that I got at Home Depot. Ooh. Okay, it folds over, but the high heat mean that the plastic is actually bubbling on the inside and on the outside. So I might have to do a more gradual heat to make this happen. Let's just see if I can do it. Okay. That's not too bad. The joint looks good. One, two, three, four, five. That works. So I don't have to be heating and bending at the same time, which is good because I've only got two hands so far. Well, that's interesting. So just a little bit of heat, five seconds of heat on the joints is actually providing enough of a, a, a change to let it bend easier. Let's get this robot assembled. Stay together. I'll probably glue this one together as well. But look at this robot. Just look at the colors. It looks like a melted Crayola river. You'll notice the coloring at the top of the head, the end of the hands and the, the feet, the coloring is different. It's more compressed here, but it's wider gaps. And that's because when the printer is printing, because I was configuring the palette to do between 200 and 750 millimeters of filament per filament when it was randomly choosing it, when it's flat, there's more parts for it to print and use that filament on. So when it's tall on the build plate and it's just the head, the hands and the feet that are up, it means that more filament can be used per. And so you get a better representation of the colors and they're not as washed out right there. Well, that was a lot of fun. We showcased a really cool model from Fab365. It's a $5 download, but I'm pretty sure I got $5 worth of enjoyment out of this model. We also learned that a possibly corrupt SD card can cause a printer to do strange things because G-code is plain text and a corruption in an SD card can corrupt the plain text and the G-code would just become garbled symbols and the printer wouldn't know what to do and it may dive into the print, it may go up and down and just spit out a bunch of filament, we don't know. We were also able to show off how changing filaments often makes for a colorful representation of a robot demonstrated on the Ray's 3D N2 Plus and demonstrated on the G-Max using the Palette Plus. Well, and finally, we learned that when you embiggen some things, it means the clearance between multiple parts in an object grow. And so when it's harder to move this arm, this arm is easy to move all the way around right when we pull it 
from the build plate. Well, my goal is always to educate and inspire and to have a good time along the way. And I believe we learned some cool things and hopefully I've inspired you to print this robot or other robots or just to print some really cool stuff in different ways to get different effects. And I love robots, so we sure had a lot of fun along the way. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support what we do here on the channel, there are tons of links down in the description and clicking any one of those links is gonna directly benefit the channel and make sure that my smile is embiggened 5% every day. But beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys, as always. High five. You can even dance like a robot, right?